Let's take a look at deriving a confidence interval for the population mean mu when sampling from a normally distributed population with a known value of the population standard deviation sigma. In this video I'm going to derive the appropriate confidence interval formula and I worked through an example in another video. The confidence interval for mu will be of the form x bar plus and minus the margin of error. x bar is the sample mean and in this video we're going to determine the appropriate margin of error. Suppose we are about to draw a random sample of n independent observations from a normally distributed population with mean mu and standard deviation sigma. Before we've drawn the sample, we can view the sample mean x bar as a random variable. And under the conditions described here, x bar is a normally distributed random variable with a mean of mu and a standard deviation of sigma over the square root of n. And we've discussed this previously when we talked about the sampling distribution of x bar. Notation wise, we sometimes call this sigma x bar, which is the standard deviation of the sampling distribution of x bar. If we so desired, we could standardize x bar. We could take x bar minus its mean, which is mu, and divide by its standard deviation, which is sigma over the square root of n. And we could call this a z because this random variable is going to have the standard normal distribution. We're going to come back to that in a moment, but for now let's recall a couple of features of the standard normal distribution. If z is a standard normal random variable, then the probability that z takes on a value between minus 1.96 and 1.96 is 0.95. Or in other words, the area under the standard normal curve between minus 1.96 and 1.96 is 0.95. And in this picture, the remaining area of 0.05 is split evenly into the two tails. I'm choosing 0.95 here because a 95% confidence level is the most common confidence level chosen. But we can pick any confidence level we like. So to generalize this, the probability that z takes on a value between minus z sub alpha over 2 and z sub alpha over 2 is 1 minus alpha. Or visually, the area under the standard normal curve between minus z sub alpha over 2 and z sub alpha over 2 is 1 minus alpha. And here the remaining bit, alpha, is split evenly into the two tails. z sub alpha over 2 is the value of z that yields an area to the right of alpha over 2. As an example, going back to this other picture for a minute, we would say that alpha is 0 0.05, and alpha over 2 is 0 0.025. And so we would say that z subscript alpha over 2, which is 0 0.025 in this case, is equal to 1.96, because 1.96 has an area of 0 0.025 to the right. But recall that x bar minus mu over sigma over the square root of n has the standard normal distribution. And I called this z because it had the standard normal distribution. So I can take this quantity and sub it in to this equation. So the probability that this random variable takes on a value between minus z sub alpha over 2 and z sub alpha over 2 is 1 minus alpha. But what I'm trying to get is a confidence interval for mu. So I'm going to use a little algebra to isolate mu. I'm going to let you verify for yourself that when we do isolate mu, this is what we end up with. So when we are about to draw our sample, the probability that mu gets captured between x bar minus z sub alpha over 2 times sigma over the square root of n and x bar plus z sub alpha over 2 times sigma over the square root of n is 1 minus alpha. An important point to note here is that x bar is the random variable. Mu is a fixed, unknown quantity that we are trying to estimate. 
Any variability is due to the fact that the sample mean is a random variable. And when we do get our sample, the sample mean is going to take on a value. And we are going to call this quantity the lower bound of the confidence interval, and this quantity the upper bound of the confidence interval. And that confidence interval is going to have a confidence level of 1 minus alpha, which we often express as a percentage. To summarize, a 1 minus alpha times a 100% confidence interval for mu is given by the sample mean plus and minus this margin of error that we derived above. And for example, suppose we wanted a 95% confidence interval. That would mean that alpha is 0 0.05 and the z sub 0.025, which we looked at earlier, would be 1.96. So a 95% confidence interval is x bar plus and minus 1.96 times sigma over the square root of n. Recall that sigma over the square root of n is the standard deviation of the sampling distribution of x bar. This video is about deriving the appropriate confidence interval formula. I work through examples of calculating and interpreting confidence intervals from you in other videos.